Hey, this is Ryan Orwig with StatMed Learning, here to talk to you about the 5010 study rule. Flawed study session structure is a basic problem many of our med students present with. We can fix this with the 5010 study rule, which provides a simple framework for optimal study session structure. The benefits include optimized retention, improved stamina throughout the session and the day, and compartmentalization of distractions. These benefits should be foundational goals for studying in med school, for boards, you name it. Optimal study session structure, important concepts. So we wanna think about how information is retained, minimum to maximum. We wanna think about how time progresses as we study. In our framework, it's gonna be 50 minutes. We wanna think about primacy, which means we remember more from the beginning of a planned study session we want to be aware of the intermediate phase where we remember less from the middle of a session and recency where we remember more from the end of the planned study session. The research on these three concepts is not ironclad for sure, but I do like the premise behind them. I think more importantly, I think if we structure our sessions, we can use compartmentalization to block out distracting or off task activities from studying. I think this is really important. We want to be aware of multitasking. Great when not studying, but is terrible when we are studying. So we want to use a structure to partition and eliminate multitasking during study events. And then the role of interruptions. We want to eliminate even the briefest of interruptions. A lot of flawed study processes are just riddled with interruptions. And we really want to use our structure and compartmentalization to reduce or eliminate these. So here's an example of an unstructured three hour study session, not using the 5010 rule, what I might call study marathon, what a lot of our med students might just call studying. This is supposed to be an exaggeration, but some people say, hey, that's creepy. You look like you, you tapped into my mind. So here we think about when we start. So we start our study session over a three hour span. We start studying, we're studying. And then almost immediately we you know check Twitter to see if we're missing out on anything. We keep going and then of course we remember, hey, I need my coffee, let me get up and go get my coffee. We don't count these as breaks. This is just organic study marathon stuff. And I'm moving along, my dog comes up. Well, it's, it's rude to ignore my dog. My dog needs love, I need to give my dog some affection. Keep moving and I'm still studying but I'm also engaging in a text conversation with some friends from high school. So I keep moving along but I'm still studying and then my significant other comes up. Well, it'd be rude to ignore her. We talk about some stuff, what we're going to do this weekend, whatever. Then I'm just back into studying. Before you know it, I'm checking Instagram, getting sucked into that for a few minutes, back to studying. Then I, I you know, I get, I get an alert from Twitter. I got to see what's going on there. Heaven forbid if I miss something there. I'm studying some more. I get a phone call. Of course, I have to answer it. It's a robo call, but I'm distracted. Moving on, now I do make the decision, I'm studying, I wanna learn more about West Nile virus. This is not essential, but I'd like to know more. I wanna make sure that I'm clear so I go into the internet and I start reading about it, which is sort of fine, but you have to ask yourself, is it really urgent and important? But before I know it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading about Star Wars. I'm checking my email, which is a serious black hole you can get sucked into. Then I, well, you know, then I, I've got to be responsible and make sure my minutes are good on my phone. When I, I'm thinking about the weather this weekend, I'd like to go hiking. So I'm thinking about buying some shoes. And then I'm just reading about the US soccer team. And then I watch this cute video about penguins and all oh, this is hilarious, this video about a dog that can't catch hot dogs. And you know, eventually I'm, I'm back into studying, but you can see these gaps, how much time is being lost and I'm still quote unquote on task. I answer a text back and forth on that, still studying, but I am engaging in some messaging with some friends from college on Facebook. My dog comes back, we mess around, and eventually I'm like, you know what? I'm at the end of my three hours, great, mission accomplished. Now this is obviously a flawed process. Um, one of my issues, there's no, there's no plan of attack, there's no workflow in place. When we work with our, our med students, we're really focusing on how to generate a study workflow. Now, the 5010 rule doesn't solve that, but I, I think that it's, it's, it's a starting point. You know, there's no sense of when to start or stop. There's no structure to the sessions. There's no exploitation of primacy and recency. 
these random breaks, look at all the white gaps in here and these interruptions, they degrade focus and memory. This toggling between, alternating between study and non-study tasks just takes longer for everything to happen. Um, and it's easy to get off track. There are no rules, there's no guidelines, there's no boundaries. And that's gonna lead to a loss of productivity and efficiency as you add this up over the course of a day, over a week, over a block, over a month, over a semester. The amount of time lost here is staggering. So when we think about how to solve this kind of problem, we have to start with something really fundamental, which is an optimal study session structure. Every study hour I think should be framed and structured. I don't care how that is. This is just one way to do it. The 50-10 rule is a simple model for structuring every hour where you have 50 minutes of continuous, uninterrupted study, you can still toggle between study activities, it doesn't have to be the same thing, and then 10 minutes of a non-study break where you move around, multitask, engage in social media, talk to people, rest, exercise, whatever. So what can happen within the 50-10 hour? Well, in the 50 minutes of studying, only study-based activities belong here. Phones must be turned off, eliminating calls, texts, alerts, social media, all of that. Turn it off out of sight, people say, well, what if you know there's an emergency? It's only gonna be 49, 50 minutes at the most. Um, I, I can't get into managing everybody's relationship with their mother on this, but it is a decision you need to make, and I think it's a good decision. Internet use must be selective and related to study tasks or not used at all. Or you dedicate a time at the end of the day, you keep a list of things you want to look up. At the end of the day, you go back and you only look up the things. You give yourself an hour to look stuff up. And a lot of times if you wait, you'll realize that even though you wanted to look something up, it wasn't urgent and important. And then you save yourself from getting off tasks. Uh, and, you know, mul no multitasking during studying. We, we, as a culture, seem to value multitasking. Um, and multitasking is great except when learning dense material. If you're multitasking while studying, you're going to degrade that. And that's why I like the 50-10 rule so much is this the way it separates study from non-study activities. And even socializing, like if you're, stu if you're in, a, in, a, in an area where your peers can come up to you or your significant other, you're better off having boundaries. Do it on the 10-minute break. Letting these random interruptions occur is not good for you. And for all you know, they're interrupting you on their 10-minute break. And then what happens during those 10 minutes of break? Anything not study related, use this as a reboot reset. You know, relax, personal to-do list items, entertainment, socialize, multitask as much as you want. You know, go wild, uh, make phone calls, send texts, gorge on social media and other media streams, uh, get on the internet, whatever works for you. And you know, moving around or engaging in brief exercise is strongly recommended here. It increases the highly oxygenated blood flow to the brain, increasing your mental capacities, you know, 90 seconds of air, of air squats, 90 seconds of push-ups or wall presses, use an exercise band, 90 seconds pulling the, the exercise band apart, firing the large muscle groups. And again, I'm not an exercise physiologist, but we do understand that exercise, firing those large muscle groups is one of the best things we can do for, for improved cognitive functioning. So here's some examples of things. Let's compare these two different four-hour study blocks. Uh, over here we have four hours staggered into the 50-10 model. And down here we just have that one long uninterrupted four hour study session marathon. Well, example one is superior because we, we do spend more time in primacy and recency, less time in the intermediate. But more importantly, it compartmentalizes those distracting activities into the 10 minute breaks. Now we've got these 10 minute breaks. That's where all your internet use, your text, your social media, your calls, your interpersonal interruptions, your acting on intrusive thoughts, whatever is happening, it can happen there compartmentalized. And then you always, you have something to work for as you go through your 50 minutes. I really like this simple structure. So how might that look if we were to put it in play? If we turn that around to a three hour study session using the 50-10 study rule here, you know, we've got our 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off, 50 minutes on, 10 minutes off. Well, I do like to think about a little bit of prep time. You know, listening to music prior to study is good. Improves our mood. Maybe I send out all the texts I want and flip my phone to airplane, airplane mode. This ASA this is something we get into in our stat med class, but this is where we're generating a workflow with study strategies and th specific things we want to do with the thing we're studying. I'm not going to go into that now, 
And that's not, not essential, but not a bad idea. Some sort of idea of what you want to cover. And then we use a timer. Go buy a $7 timer at Target on Amazon, just with start, stop, and you've got that timer going, counting down so you can see it, put the locus of control on the timer, get it off yourself. And then we do our study. Get to your break, and you might have these ideas in advance or just do it as it comes. You wanna play with your dog, and I'm not saying do all these things, but these are things you can do. You can get on social media, you can go get your coffee, you can talk to your significant other, you can watch some funny YouTube videos as long as you can stop when the timer goes off. Um, you know, social media again, turn your phone back on, answer all, read those texts, send more out, turn it back off, and you're back in. You know, maybe you want to do some music here and do, you know, th five minutes of exercise. You know, you want to check your social media stuff, you want to answer those texts, send it back off, get back in, and you're back through. Now we're done with the results we can feel good about. Hey, mission accomplished. I like this planning in advance, more productivity and self-awareness. I like knowing I'm beholden to, the, beholden to the timer, beholden to the structure. We're doing our studying in those 50 minute blocks. We go wild on our 10 minute break. And it leads to improved productivity and efficiency across the board. It's something that's sustainable as you can move forward. And that is how the 50-10 study rule can help you with sustained focus, improve stamina and optimize retention as you study in med school and beyond. Feel free to contact us online to learn more about how StatMed Learning can help you study in med school or for the boards. Thanks.